What's up, Eagles Nation? What's going on, NFL World? How you doing, Division Rivals? This is Stephen Heider with Gate City Sports Channel, the sports channel where the cerebral NFL fan comes for about 10 minutes of daily content. What's up, guys? Once again, Stephen Heider, Gate City Sports Channel. Listen, if you're new to my channel, you like talking Philadelphia Eagles sports, you want someone who breaks down film, and you like someone who, you know, backs up their opinions with actual hard evidence to make you understand why they feel the way they do, this might be the channel for you. So hit that subscribe button if I just describe that, and that sounds like something you'd be into. So all my OGs, hit that like button, guys. You already know what that like button does. That's what takes this and spreads it out across the platform, so that way we can bring other people into our community. All right, y'all. Sorry, I'm kind of excited. I really want to jump into today's topic. Look, I pay attention to when I start hearing rumblings across the fan base. It, look, it's no secret there's a lot of excitement around Graham Harrell. Now, I'll tell you this. I didn't know this man was interviewing for the job. I made a video yesterday morning to where I hit the nail on the head. And believe me, guys, some of you are funny. I appreciate the humor in it. No, I promise you, Gate C does not work for the Philadelphia Eagles front office. I got lucky as hell. So what I'm alluding to, guys, for some of y'all that didn't watch my video from yesterday morning, I made a video about is the front office mis or are we being misled by the media about James Urban. Now, I was a James Urban backer. I thought James Urban would make a very good OC. Um, but I said in that video that, look, I, I think that you can't discount the fact that our OC is really, it's a title that, the only reason they even really give you that title here in Philadelphia is so that way you are the one who deals with the media, and then that way the passing game coordinator and the running game coordinator don't have to. To be real with you, Jeff Stoutland is not a people person, okay? This is someone they don't want actually having to handle the media. Without an OC, they have to actually, they are required to address the media. Now, in that video, I didn't mention any of that to you guys, but I did mention the fact that we really need to pay attention to what's going on with Carson Wentz and the way that we revolutionized our offense into a really unique identity at the end of the year with going up tempo, hurry up, devolving power to Carson Wentz's hands. Nowhere in my video did I mention Graham Harrell. He wasn't on my radar, guys. I'm, I'm being dead honest. This guy was not on my radar. But Eagles go out and they interview this guy named Graham Harrell, who, what kind of offense does he run? Well, you'll, you'll hear a lot of people tell you that, like, oh, well, he's just basically out there running the air raid offense. But no, he's more than that, guys. He's running an up-tempo offense that is embedded in its identity around the air raid. But this isn't just a four or five wide receiver set, and that's it. Like, this guy is, more than anything, he's an up-tempo offensive guy. And it, it intrigued me. I am both have concerns about this young man, and I see some really bright spots with this young man. I did a deep dive on some film. I couldn't watch a ton of games just because college games are really hard to get like that. It's not like they have a thing you can subscribe to and see replays of and get all 22 coaches' angles and all that. So I had to basically go off of YouTube and then see what I could see there. And I broke down two games. I broke down the highlights of one game, which was the Fresno State game, and I watched the full BYU game. And I'll tell you what. I got some concerns, but I got to tell you, I also came away impressed. So let's talk about Graham Harrell today. I don't know what my coach's thought would be. You know, I think uh, what I just try to do is make sure that the, our guys are having fun, they're loose. Okay, ladies and gents. So just start with, let's just go through the hard numbers. What was the, if everything that Graham Harrell did, what was the production he got out of his offense last season? And it's pretty impressive, to be quite honest about it. So points per game went out from 26.1. To 32 and a half. His yards per game went from 382.6 to 454. And his passing yards per game, it increased from 248.2 to 335.8. Those are good numbers, but I think the most impressive number was before Graham Harrell arrived at USC, I think they were what, five and seven in 2018. And in 2019 under him, they went eight and four, but lost their bowl game and have gone eight and five. It's a pretty good turnaround. That's, that's, that's a, a plus. That that looks good when you really look at it in its entirety. Now, I'm not the kind of guy who gets overly impressed with just numbers. Statistics are like, to me, they're just, sometimes they can be very empty and they don't really tell a story, honestly. So I went through and I found an article. It was from a Sports Illustrated thing that, where they were doing an interview and they were giving out quotes here. And there were some things that, that caught my attention. So the first thing that caught my attention was this quote here that says, people hear air raid and they think five wide receivers, no tight ends, 60 passing attempts, and 50 points a game. 
I got to tell you, I want to break something down for you. Let me roll over some film because this guy is a lot more than this. And Slovis to the air on first down, a long pass to Pittman. Just real quick, guys. That's the first play of the game against BYU, the first offensive play for USC there. And with a young, true freshman quarterback who's stepping in for their uh, quarterback, JT, whatever his name was, the kid that got injured in the first game. Look, what do they do? They come out in a 12-man formation. That's 12 men. That's two tight ends off to the offensive right that are in line. So they put, when they play tight end, the two tight ends I generally saw on the field for USC were Eric Cromenhawk, I guess is how you say his name. I don't know how you say his name, guys. And then Josh um, Fallow, number 84 and number 83. They were utilizing some two tight end sets. And that excites me because if you're going to coach here in Philadelphia, you better know how to use two tight ends. He does. He used two tight ends more than I think a lot of people understand or, or really know about this guy. And I'm going to show you a couple more examples of this. That's in for him after a nine-yard gain for USC in the first play from scrimmage. This is still the first drive of that BYU game. They're going up-tempo. They've got BYU on its heels. They're not matching up well to 12 men. And Graham Harrell's not, he's not letting go. He's hitting that accelerator. And you can see there they come out in 12 man. They've got um, Croman Hawk, number 84, who's in line on the offensive left. And then they've got Fallow, number 83, in the wing positioning. And they motion Fallow from the left side to the right side. And they just they keep that foot on the accelerator, guys. I mean, this is important to see from this guy because you've got to show a range of depth and a, you know, an ability to call plays out of multiple fronts and multiple sets here for the Philadelphia Eagles in order for this to be a good mesh, a good marriage. And I do like the fact that this guy does seem to fit with the up-tempo, like seems to fit with what we want to do with Carson Wentz. So, you know, the only other guy I can think of who has this kind of capabilities is Jim Caldwell, but his health isn't right. I'm not too sure Jim Caldwell wants to sign on for a role where you're just really not, it's more of an advisor. Like you're not really there to actually be the offensive coordinator. So, I, I mean, so far I'm impressed, but I'm going to give you one more look at this. Are certainly in sync early in the season. Another pass play. Slovis long throw. I came away very impressed with Graham Harrell's utilization of the 12 man personnel package from this game. And look, this guy's going to get some exceptional athletes to work with in Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard. I like number 84 out there in, at USC watching this game. Like, he looks like someone who could play in the league. Uh, Eric Croman Hawk, he, he looked like a kid that could play. But. That's not Dallas Goddard. That's not Zach Ertz. Like, this guy's going to really be in for a treat with guys like that if he's the hire. And I'm not saying he's the hire, guys. There's there's still a lot to go on here. But I am impressed, and I want to read you another quote, and I want to transition again into more film. So this is what he says. This isn't really the way people envision the air raid, right? So what he's saying is it's, it's not about going five wide receivers and spreading out offenses and having no running backs or no tight ends on the field. What his system really is, is working to death a small number of plays with shorter play calls, perfecting those plays, and out-executing, not out-scheming the opponent. You can see, like, when he gets a, an opponent on his heels, he will stay in that, you know, that particular personnel package, maybe switching up one or two things here or there, and he will keep coming at you until you can shut it down. He's going to keep feeding you that. I mean, it's pretty impressive to see. Now I want to transition. I want to show you something I really liked, which was he played a lot out of two back sets, which was, that wasn't okay with me. I like to see that because that's the other area where I think we have a strength on our football team. I went out and won it, and he did. Stephen Carr has a couple of scores. He is that's Graham Harrell coming out in a 20-man personnel, two backs, you know, set with split backs in the backfield. And, you know, look, he hit you there, get you a little running action. Uh, that's Stephen Carr running the ball there. And I liked what I saw from them coming out of that two-back set against Fresno State. I mean, it looked good. And, and I think that there's something there to work with when it comes to Philadelphia. 15 for 17. He unloads down. Once again, guys, it's Graham Harrell in the two-back set, 20-man personnel, three receivers, two running backs. And this time he's working in the deep middle. So the first play we got to run. The second play, we got him basically working the deep middle of the field out of that two-back set. I mean, I I got to be honest with you. You know, he he doesn't like kind of come in and out of the of the play set so much. So he's not like going like 21-man, then he's immediately inside of like 11-man, then he's immediately in 12-man. Like, no, he sticks with like a set 
and he keeps running it until he gets shut down. And he seems to stick with that throughout particular like series within a ball game. But I got to tell you, man, he, he did a pretty damn good job at doing it. And that's, that's important. Beats his old buddy Gaston for a gain of 28. Same kind of look, 20 man personnel, two back set, split backs. But this time, you know, they work you to the flats. They, they set up like a little wide receiver screen action there. I mean, if you look at that sequence of plays, which were three plays in a row, they hit you with a run, they hit you with work in the deep middle, and they hit you in the flats. That's impressive. That's an impressive range of, look, you know, maybe the plays aren't that, you know, you know, confusing, and all, but because of where they're working you, because they're working you at all three levels, right? So they're working you not only with the run, not only with the pass, but working you in the flats, working you in the deep middle, like, that's that's a positive to see from the kid. Like, I I like what I see from him in that particular you know respect of the game. Now, some of the other things I'll tell you about Graham Harrell are this: he um primarily from what I can see of these games, he operates out of eleven man personnel, which he's going to fit in the NFL because pretty much everyone does. He will go ten man sets. I did see some ten men sets across the board. It's a four wide receiver kind of look. Four wide receivers normally one running back is when you're going to be in your ten man. And, you know, it looked good. I mean, he, he was doing okay. I don't know how often you could do that in Philadelphia, but we don't know what the wide receiver core is going to look like yet either. So who knows? In addition to that, I really love the way that he worked his tight ends and things like the 11-man personnel package. I mean, he really moved Eric Cromenhawk, number 84, around the offensive formation a lot. I mean, he would have him in line, split out, in the wing. I mean, he really did a great job working number 84 in, in that formation. I mean, I was impressed with what I saw from him. Daniels. You can see here that's Eric Cromenhawk in the wing positioning to the offensive left. And look, I, I mean, it's kind of a game of where's Waldo with this guy. And, and they used him in a, in a number of ways. They used him in, you know, actual progressions to be like one of the, the you know, quarterback's reads in his progressions so he's running an actual route they've used him as a decoy to, to basically hit you with a, a fake you know play action kind of running type deal and they've also they used him as a lead block so i mean he's he really moved around this formation a lot and it's this is a really good thing to see and look how they're flying out of there again it comes out quickly there all right this time around guys you can see they got eric crewman hawk now he's in the wing positioning to the offensive right. And he's really set up almost like what you would see, like an, an off formation eye almost, but it's not. He's, he's got the running back still split off to the quarterback's left. But, you know, look, he's got a little Joe Gibbs going on there. I mean, you can see this guy is a little more than just an air raid type coordinator. Like, he's got more to his game than that. And I love the way he was utilizing these tight ends in this system. Like, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm impressed after watching the film. Cuts it up. Now they have, once again, Eric Cromenhawk to, you know, in the wing positioning to the offensive right. This time they're going to run a little, little inside trap kind of play. And they got Eric Cromenhawk out there and they got Graham Harrell out there. Graham Harrell's acting like Joe Gibbs and you got Cromenhawk acting like John Riggins because I was impressed, man. I, I really, when you look at number 84, Eric Cromenhawk, I can see him. I can see him utilizing Dallas Goddard in many of the same ways. Because I think Dallas Goddard gives you that same athleticism, that same capabilities. He's just, he's really good. I mean, Dallas Goddard is a much more talented football player. And I, I got to tell you, I like what I see here. I'll give you one more play from the tight end positioning. I'm going to show you him kind of, this is split out, but it's really, he's still in tight to the formation. He's just not in line. He's still in a standing positioning. So, but it is an example of this. And you can see the, the range of this football player. The sheer self-belief for Daniels and this offense. They've been raving about this time, they take Eric Cromenhawk and they use him as a split end. He's in tight to the formation, and he's one of those guys who's going to be responsible for getting a good block. And a lot of things here. Number one, you can see the range and the depth of Eric Cromenhawk and the way that Graham Harrell used his tight ends. But number two, you can also see from a coordinator standpoint, when he's down around the goal line, his first instinct is not to throw the football necessarily. He will run the ball. I also noticed this with him with short yardage situations. He will run the football, which that's impressive to me because that was the one thing that I would have been really concerned about. It's like, okay, like, is this guy just going to completely abandon the run with, you know, 
coming in here because that's we already had that issue here with Doug Peterson. So, you know, I still have a little bit of concern there, but in situational type things, I came away kind of impressed with when he decided to run the football. Now, I want to get into this last little part of this video here, guys, before I jump off here. And I want to give you one more quote in terms of what might scare me about this young man. Here's the quote. You can't do everything. I think a lot of people try to take a little bit of everything offensively. If you do that, you don't have much of an identity. You're just okay at everything and not really good at something. Here's my problem. You can't be too predictable in the NFL or you will get exposed. That's the flip side of that. Yeah, we do this really great. Well, you know what? Defensive coordinator is also really great in the NFL and they'll take it away. So that would be the only kind of thing that I would be hesitant towards this guy because he's very young. He can be probably pretty naive, but, you know, when you put the film on, I did like what I, I, like, he's more, there's more to him than what John McMillan, I listened to John McMillan, this guy's never clearly watched film on the guy. I listened to Jeff Mosher and them, like, they they haven't watched film on this guy. They're just thinking of him in that Texas Tech air raid system, not knowing this guy was way more than this at USC. This guy really flexed himself in terms of the different formations he was using. So I'm not saying this guy is the hire for the Eagles. This could be nothing more. Jeff Motionham could be corrected. This is just a way of placating the fan base, bringing the guy that brings in some excitement just to kind of make people think, like, oh, well, no, the Eagles are really shaking every tree. But at the same time, man, if they're turning on film and they're watching this guy, there's no way they're not walking out impressed because I was damn sure impressed by what I saw. All right, guys, with that said, I'm about to jump out of here. This was my you know, film study on Graham Harrell. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And you know what time it is. E-A-G-L-E-S. Hey, guys, hopefully this was helpful. We'll see what happens, man. I'm not making any predictions here, but I was impressed by watching the film. He impressed the hell out of me.